everyone and welcome back to Morning Markets where the team at True Potential discuss the key things that have been moving asset markets in the past 24 hours. Today we'll focus in on what we heard from the Bank of England and the Monetary Policy Committee yesterday. So just firstly, looking at asset markets yesterday, just a continuation of what we've seen over the past couple of days with the more growth oriented areas of the market underperforming relative to um, the, the broader market. So by that, we can see the Nasdaq yesterday was down about 1.3, 1.4% relative to the S&P, which was down 80 basis points in the day. Similar trends in other markets if we look at Europe and the composition of what was happening there and also within Asia. So similar trends and broader trends. Within fixed income markets yesterday, really very little to report except what happened in UK gilts. And that's very much tied to what we'll come on and discuss around the Monetary Policy Committee. The other area that's just worth noting and something we commented on last week, that, that how the oil price had weakened off. Oil prices moved up some 10% over the course of this week, as there seems to be some more unity um, within OPEC Plus in terms of the supply discipline, so helping maintain uh, a market balance there. So we've seen WTI move back above $40 a barrel over the course of the week. Currency markets yesterday, very much about what the MPC said. We saw sterling uh, weaken about 70 basis points relative to, to the dollar and a number of other uh, major currencies early yesterday, just around 12 o'clock as the statement was released. But then it rallied through the, the course of the day to close relatively unchanged against the dollar. Some of that is due to the dollar weakness yesterday where we saw a resumption of that trend that's been in place for probably about the past three months of the dollar um, incrementally weakening relative to the basket of other currencies did strengthen as we mentioned earlier in the week around the Fed announcement but that 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 trend of, of weakening has has sort of reasserted itself um, yesterday again. So turning to the MPC what did what did we hear? As expected, there was no change to interest rates left at 0.1% and the asset purchase program remained at 745 billion pounds. Looking at the, the statement in more detail, um, the bank commented that the economic environment was slightly better than they had envisaged when they had last, last met. And that's very similar to what we heard from the Fed on Wednesday. So economic uh, position slightly better. They also talked about the the forward thinking and how they're they're looking at things there and clearly one of the the big considerations there is is brexit and what does that mean for the the uk's trade relationships the base case scenario that the bank of england have at this point in time assumes a wide-ranging trade agreement is in place on the first of january next year that remains to be seen so they have noted in the statement that they will look at that um, in terms of the policy action that may or may not be required in the meeting in November. So we can we can look out for that then. Tucked away at the very end of the statement yesterday was just a comment around how the bank are working with the Prudential Regulatory Authority, the PRA, to consider the impact of, of negative rates uh, on the UK banking system. That's a, a step forward um, from where we have been with the Bank of England over the past number of months. If we cast our mind back maybe six months ago, negative interest rates wasn't something that the, the bank appeared to be contemplating at all. Then over the, the number of months, we've seen it come more into the agenda. It's been more in the press, more discussed about. The last meeting, it was deemed to be part of the toolkit, but I think moving it forward to having a, a joint discussion with the PRA around the impact on the UK banking system suggests that it's it's much more seriously being considered as, as part of the agenda. My own view, the, the Bank of England probably do prefer to continue with the asset purchase programme and would expand that initially before moving to, to negative rates, but clearly they are signalling that it's, it's further up the agenda than maybe market participants had expected. That's why we saw sterling initially weaken yesterday and why we saw gilt strengthen. So gilt's moving in from a, a year, the 10 year from 20 basis point yield to, to 17 basis points, given the, the potential that rates could go negative. 
So that's something that's uh, worth definitely uh, continuing to monitor. I think the challenge there is, one, as the bank are acknowledging the, the impact that it could have on the, the UK banking uh, system, but also thinking about just other regions where negative interest rates have been implemented. We look at Europe, we look at Japan. Uh, I think we can challenge sort of the, the efficacy of, of that policy. Has it been successful? It's not really evident. So time will tell. On the positive side yesterday in the UK, we, we heard that from both the UK and the EU that the informal discussions around the trade uh, agreement seem to have moved forward a little bit. So that's a, a clear positive. And then this morning we have retail sales again continuing to show that, that continued improvement over the past number of months. So positive signs within that for, for the UK economy as well. But clearly, as the Bank of England were acknowledging, challenges ahead. That's it for today and for this week. Please do um, subscribe on the YouTube channel and I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thank you. The True Potential YouTube channel is quick and easy. Simply go to your YouTube app on your phone, type in True Potential and press the red subscribe option. You'll then be notified as and when new videos are released.